In 2017, Narendra Modi became India's first Prime Minister to visit Israel. During the visit, India and Israel signed a series of arms deals that totaled over $2.6 billion, in addition to tech and science deals that totaled over $40 million, which isn't necessarily unusual considering India is in fact the biggest buyer of Israeli arms. But it is pretty surprising when you consider how India didn't even recognize Israel as a state when it declared its independence in 1948. Instead, India allied itself with the Palestinians. So how did India go from not recognizing Israel as a state to becoming one of its most important military allies? Hey guys, I'm Sana, this is AJ Plus, and this Sunday I want to delve with you into this little known history of the relationship between India and Israel and how capitalism made India and Israel friends, kinda. Actually, really. India and Israel's relationship begins with, well, when Israel was established in 1948 after what Israel calls its War of Independence fought against neighboring and invading Arab countries. Following its victory, Israel declared itself a state and within days and weeks it was recognized by the United States, the USSR and 19 other countries. India, which was fresh off the heels of the bloodiest partition of the 20th century, voted against the partition of Palestine in 1947 and against allowing Israel into the United Nations in 1949. See, India's concern was twofold. It viewed the partition of Palestine as a colonial imposition, so it sympathized with the Palestinians. It also had good, long-standing relations with Arab countries. So upsetting its regional allies and going against its own anti-colonial principles weren't things that India was too stoked about. And as journalist Vijay Prashad pointed out to me, India wasn't just a passive supporter of Palestine. India was perhaps Palestine's most devoted or closest ally. PLO Chairman Yasser Arafat used to refer to India's Prime Minister Indira Gandhi as my sister. Now, India did eventually recognize the state of Israel in 1950, but it remained pretty distant when it came to diplomatic relations with the state. For instance, while it allowed an Israeli consulate to be opened in Mumbai that same year, it didn't allow for an embassy in its own capital of Delhi. India also was a member of the Non-Aligned Movement, which was a group founded in 1961 of countries that didn't really want to align with any power bloc during the Cold War. A crucial part of the Non-Aligned Movement was support for the Palestinian Liberation Organization, and India was one of the first non-Arab states to recognize the PLO as the representative of the Palestinians. Yes, the same PLO that Israel considered a terrorist organization. Now, despite being non-aligned during the Cold War, India did begin to move towards the Soviet Union while the United States focused on Pakistan. And while India and Israel were cold on the diplomatic front, Indian and Israeli intelligence services known as RAW and Mossad respectively did collaborate when security and military interests intersected. So relations between India and Israel remained like this until the whole, you know, collapse of the bipolar world order, aka Soviets out, America on top. When the Soviet Union was collapsing and eventually did dissolve in 1991, India had to shift its political and economic direction. And that new direction took it towards the United States. After finding itself in major debt, India set out to economically liberalize in 1991, and that meant the US had to be a major partner. We in this country have to wake up to the harsh new realities of this world. And as Prashad told me, that meant that India had to forge a relationship with Israel. What the Americans told the Indians was if you want a close relationship with Washington DC, you have to first uh, make up with Israel. In other words, the road to uh, Washington DC had to go through Tel Aviv. So we see the full establishment of diplomatic ties between India and Israel in 1992, which included opening that embassy in Delhi finally. And we see that relationship translate throughout the 90s and 2000s as a strong military one. And Prashad stresses that the relationship between India and Israel should be looked at through the lens of arms deals, not simply a link between Hindu nationalism and Zionism. And it's an arms relationship that really begins, by the way, after India's 1998 nuclear testing, which led the United States to tighten its relationship with India and impose sanctions. India could no longer access American arms because of various amendments against uh, non-proliferation in the US Congress. And in the late 1990s, of course, Russian arms manufacturing was still suffering greatly from the collapse of the Soviet Union. And so here came the Israelis saying essentially, you know, we can provide you with American quality arms, 
but without the kind of hypocrisies of the United States government. A 2003 visit by Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon to India showed the world how the relationship between the two countries was evolving publicly. And Modi's 2017 visit to Israel was also another showing of the right-wing Hindu nationalist government's commitment to growing its relationship with Israel. While Prashad doesn't think that the primary relationship between the two should be defined in ideological terms, he does say that you can't really ignore the link between Hindu nationalism and Zionism. The current Hindu right government has an ideological view that's remarkably similar to that of the Zionist leadership in Israel, which is to say it generally uh, has an antipathy to Muslims. It has a very distorted vision of security where the idea of terrorism, particularly so-called Islamic terrorism, uh, focuses their attention. And both India and Israel have a huge military presence in the Kashmir Valley and the Palestinian territories respectively. Think curfews, checkpoints, protest crackdowns, political prisoners, yeah lots in common. But despite this, India can't completely pivot towards Israel, becoming a sort of US-like ally in which the relationship is sacrosanct or inalienable. It has some pretty significant ideological, economic, and political constraints. Despite closer relations with Israel, India has overwhelmingly stuck to principle in its UN General Assembly voting record. But that's also perhaps because of its own allies and even some frenemies. All of the non-aligned membership votes against Israel when these atrocities come up in the UN. So the idea is if India breaks ranks, others may follow. But thus far, India has not been able to break ranks. It is also held back by its membership in the non-aligned movement and more recently in the BRICS bloc. This is largely because Russia, China, South Africa, they will not countenance any kind of pro-Israel voting record from India. Additionally, India is a big consumer of oil, and countries like Iran, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia are among its top suppliers. In other words, countries that don't exactly have the best of relations with Israel. And while Modi's visit to Israel was treated as somewhat significant in the media, minus the symbolism of him being India's first prime minister to go, nothing too exceptional actually happened. Yes, a $2.6 billion arms deal was signed, but how significant is that when India has consistently been the top consumer of Israeli weapons. Prashad also thinks that the relationship between India and Israel isn't as strong as many may like to think. He sees it as more opportunist than existential. As with so much in the world, arms sales governs policy. And if there is an alternative to the Israeli arms industry for India, I would fathom that the relationship would dampen. And it's worth noting that India, a country of over 1.3 billion people, does have a diversity of political opinion, including on Israel. Surprise. There are Indian political movements and parties, and of course everyday people, who are against normalization with Israel, especially those on the left of the political spectrum. But with Modi and the Hindu nationalist government's popularity still expanding, and with an increasingly hostile border with China, it remains to be seen how off its own traditional path India is willing to go with Israel. When we usually think about who the Palestinians call their allies, India isn't the first country that comes to mind. What did you guys think? Did you guys know about this relationship between India and Israel? And what are some other relationships, other geopolitical relationships that you want to know about? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and come back next Sunday when we come at you with another great video. I promise.